Yeah, I didn't know if I'd have enough here. Um, so I think there's something about working out and then making me brave to come on um, to do a live. So, uh, today's day 101 without my man. Um, I would tell you that day 98 and 99 over the weekend was were two of the hardest days that I think I've had. I think because I couldn't, I didn't know if I could get out of that grief. It was so deep and so overwhelming and um, it knocked me down um, into a really dark place. And Sunday afternoon, I. I texted a few people and asked for prayer and, um, you know, just tell my son and daughter-in-law I was really struggling um, mentally, emotionally, like I was, I just didn't know if I could keep going, y'all. Um, and I know God heard my prayers and I heard the prayers of so many of you praying for me. I think people picked up on it in some of my posts on Instagram or Facebook. And um, I, I didn't know that I could cry as much as I cried in those two days and groaned and moaned. And um, yeah, I'm writing a book and it's called something about my first 100 days of grief. Today's day, day 101. So, you know, my grief hasn't ended. I know it's not going to end after the first 100 days. But I believe God wants me to bring forth a message. Um, thank you, Deborah, for praying for me. Um, a message of hope and um, that somehow I'm asking God to unveil his mysteries to me. Somehow, like the separation and my bleeding broken heart is going to bring glory to him. And so a scripture that ministered to me yesterday and today is Isaiah 58 verse 8. And because I have my phone on live, I can't go back and look at it and I'm out walking. Um, but it's about my rear guard. Like when I look behind me, I would see God's glory. And he says that he'll go in front of us and it will be like a new day and he'll bring healing and restoration to me. There's several parts of that verse that I've really been underlining and hanging out with. And my prayer is that when I look behind me, look behind the first 100 days of my grief that God's glory would be evident. And I know I can't do it without him. He is my strength. He is my joy. Um, he's the one that is helping me. Um, and I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. Um, so that verse is beautiful, y'all. Psalm 58, verse 8. There's a lot in it about healing and restoration. And so I release that to you. Like if you need healing physically, emotionally, spiritually, that God would, he is able to heal our spirit, our mind, our soul, our physical bodies. Like he is the healer. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I take a deep breath today of day 101. A, a dove just flew, flew by <laughs> and I see a squirrel in the tree and the butterflies and something very special. I feel the breeze, you know, um, I think there's a few videos I made this weekend that I eventually, I think will share. But when I feel the breeze like this, like just come on me, I know it's God and Holy Spirit just bringing his touch to me. Um, because, uh, yeah, like that's, hard for me to say this, but it's one of the things I've missed the most in the last few days is my husband's touch. You know, Jesus made us with five senses to understand his love and to get to experience his love. 
Like if we couldn't hear or see or smell or taste or touch, we wouldn't know God's love and we wouldn't be able to show God's love to others. And I'm writing, um, well, it's in my head still, but it will be something that I will write, possibly an e-course. And certainly I'll be teaching live at retreats in the future when COVID-19, COVID what is it, 17? I don't know. The virus, the pandemic gets, um, we get control of it and, and be able to move around, but on the five senses and how we use them to create in our creative journey. But anyway, I sidetracked on that, y'all. Um, so anyway... I just bless you with this. The touch is so important, y'all. And God sends me his breeze, like to touch me in his embrace. And I do feel he has got me very tightly in his robe, like strongly in his right hand. He's not letting go of me. I'm dancing with him. But, you know, I miss the physical touch of my husband. He patted me. We held hands on all the walks that we took, which is another book coming, 27,000 Miles, because we walked that far together um, in our 34 years and 49 weeks we were together in love. Um, so, yeah. But I, I just say embrace those that, I know right now you can only hug those that are right there with you an elbow bump bunch of people and then like wave you know we're all missing the hugs the physical touch i think this i pray there's an increased awareness of the power of the touch you know jesus's touch we see that but we have missed that that's been an aching in our soul and god made us to touch so i just hear him saying that right now like if you can touch those around you with kindness and gentleness then do it like it's a message of god's love yeah and if you can't, then you send them hugs through, you know, the airwaves. Um, but it's a very important part of how God made us to connect. And it shows him his gentleness, his kindness. And, you know, just my ache of my heart was so strong this weekend to not have my husband's touch anymore. But God... But God, I can't, I can't take that reality away. But I wanted to tell you like a sweet, special thing. I spent some time at a creek and you might've seen the painting I did Saturday night during our live worship. I was just remote, you know, here, but it's the streams of living waters and the quiet stream where Jesus led me to. Um, and thank y'all for listening to this. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Trish and Karen oh, and Tina. Um, and Vib, I can see that. I don't have my glasses on and through the tears, but y'all, one of my most favorite birds in the whole world. I love birds. I love birds. I love birds. I don't love them when they poop on me, but I love birds. And my favorite bird of all is the painted bunting. And where I grew up, not far from where I am now, a couple of hours away, we had painted buntings. Not common, but it was rare. But when they did come, it was like a really holy experience. And my mom and dad would get so excited. So it's a little songbird. And it is looks like a tropical bird. It is absolutely stunning. You should look it up. Painted bunting. And um, about probably eight or ten years ago, my sister gave me as a gift an app on my phone. And it's called iBird Pro. And I've changed phones probably three or four times since then, but it just moves over, you know, purchase out of iTunes. And it's, um, and so I can search birds and I have the pictures of birds. I have sketches of birds on it. I can search like head color and season and state where I am and all that. It's really fun to search the birds, though I'm missing my binoculars. I've got to bring, get my binoculars when I do go back home to Wimberley before I start traveling again, because I really need them. I think I'm turning into a birder. <laughs> Anyway, story is, y'all, the kisses of God came to me this weekend, and they continue to come through this painted bunting. So I went on this walk um, by myself for a few hours, took a little picnic lunch to this creek called Wallace Creek, and it's the most picturesque, beautiful, clear creek. And you'll see if you look back on my feeds and maybe in on Instagram, um, this creek. And I heard the painted bunting call. I know it's call. And so I have the ability to play the sound, y'all. And so um, I played the sound. Um, and guess what? 
the painted bunting came right to me. Like it, they're very shy, but it, I was in the big cypress trees and I saw it come and fly right over me and like land way up high. And I kept playing the song and it kept fluttering. And, um, and then I was just like so blessed. And I just sat there. Well, I actually stood against this wall um, quietly and just played that and watched this little male come and like flutter his wings. And they are red and green and purple and blue and violet and yellow. Like they are so beautiful. It is very, very amazing. Like how God created them and that we're not in a tropical zone, <laughs> but they come and summer here. And so I was so blessed. And then it's a couple of miles for me to walk back home and I'm down this little county road, um, and it's not it's not near the water there, uh, but I heard another one in the in the trees. So I pulled, stopped, and I got into the shade and I played that sound again. And here came another one right to me. It came out of the woods and came right over me. And um, I just am like, God, you're so good that you would send me my favorite bird on one of the saddest days of my life. And uh, he's like, yeah, I created these, I created animals for you, you know. I created things to help you be comforted. And uh, then yesterday, just on a walk near Justin and Anna's house down past the orchard, there's a little creek. And I was like, I'm going to call and see if they come again. And two of them came. <laughs> So it's like just a season for me to feel God's love and to see these little. Now, of course, the male bird is absolutely gorgeous. The female is very faint green and yellow and very drab looking. Uh, opposite of the way that God made humans, right? My friends, my lady friends. Um, yeah, so that's helped a lot. Like nature has helped bring solace to my heart and um, I know I can make it, you know, um, uh, yesterday with day 100 was really very, very sweet and very special. I felt strength. I was not in my deep grief and, uh, I feel like God pulled me out of the pit and gave me a firm foundation to stand on and, uh, I'm going to make it, you know? So I don't know why I get on here after I exercise. I think I feel adrenaline and I feel a little more positive. And so it gives me the energy to come on. So, uh, but yeah, today's 101 and I'm going to make it. And I'm really thinking of today. Yeah. And I'll make it through today. So thank you, Karen, for loving me and for praying for me for all these months, um, even before. <sighs> Wayman left, so, hey, Diane. So, y'all, my message is hug those that you can actually hug. Like, the human touch is so very important. God made us to be able to experience his love through that. And also, touch can be really hard and wicked and mean, you know? Slaps, don't slap. Be the gentle, kind hand. And God tells me he's holding me strongly in his right hand, and I'm believing him. And I'm asking him for the embrace. And so when the breeze comes, when I'm outside, which is starting up again right now, gentle breeze, I know he's, yeah, he's there. So I love y'all. I hope you have an amazing day. I am. Yeah, I am. Um determined. <laughs> I'm determined because I want the glory of the God, of God to be behind me and on me and over me, before me, behind me, you know, um, the rear guard. So read Isaiah 58, 8. It's really cool, y'all. And I pray for healing on all of us, for our broken hearts, for what needs to be mended and restored. God is around right now. He is moving and just call him in and say, God, I need your help here. The next verse of Psalm 58, verse 8, verse 9 says, I call to you and you answer me. <laughs> so he's answered me, y'all. He's answered me. Yeah, here comes a woodpecker. I don't know what kind, but oh, it's landing right up there. There's just butterflies and oh, it's wonderful. Like it's just gorgeous here. I'm very blessed. Okay, y'all. 
I know you got things to do, <laughs> something to do, maybe fix lunch. I don't know, but I could visit all day. Um, hey, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm just, I, I'm not going to talk about it now, but I've got some brainstorming ideas of something that I may be starting soon, and I'll put it on here for y'all. Uh, it's something you might want to join in with me, like a membership thing of a weekly chit chat, besides my small beginnings podcast, which I think I'll be starting to record some of that this afternoon. But I love y'all. Bye. Thanks for watching with me. Thank you, Karen, for loving me. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Erin. Mm -hmm. Bye, y'all.